Three-time world snooker champion Mark Williams really has put his name to this, a cleaning spray designed to remove grease, chalk and other types of dirt from the surface of snooker balls. It's intending to prevent bad contacts throwing the object ball offline and unpredictably large bounces off the cushions. This small bottle is making some big claims. And according to the advertising, this stuff is so good, you've actually got to try it to believe it. So does it actually work or is it just salt water in a bottle? Either way I wanted to find out, so I went over to the Break From Life High Tech Media Centre with our new upgraded desk and purchased some off the internet for the price of £14.94, including postage and packaging, which by happy coincidence is also roughly $14.94 if you happen to be living in the States or Europe at the moment and that's on the more expensive end of the ball cleaning market apparently. You can't see this on camera but if you really look close the balls I was just practicing with seem to have this cloudy appearance. To test if the spray works I cleaned exactly half of them. They definitely look more shiny. The cloudiness you could see in the balls before has gone. However, do they play any better? To find out, I came up with a very simple test. Strap two cues together with an elastic band and let the balls roll down the cues one after another from the same position. In theory, if the ball's playing any better, it should roll slightly further, although this seems unlikely. The moment of truth then. See if this makes any difference. I'd be surprised if it does. I really thought this test would be too boring to show and we wouldn't discover anything. But as it turned out, the ball I just cleaned rolled slightly further, as did the next lot of balls, even if it was just by a little bit. With every single pair, the clean one actually did run further. So if this one ends up with the second ball running on further, that's 11 out of 11 that have gone slightly further. Yeah, I said the cushion, the other one didn't. So they definitely roll through better, but what's the reaction like? So this is the way I'm going to test this, just by screwing back and seeing how easily it is to do that. It's just going to really be my opinion, but I'm going to start off with the balls I haven't cleaned here and move on to the ones I have and see if there's a difference. My original plan was to see if the spray allowed me to get more backspin on the cue ball. But as with how far it rolled, there's only likely to be a small difference. And there's no real way of knowing if I put the same amount of backspin on the cue ball each time. So you can't really do it fairly. So the only thing I can really do is test if it feels any easier to screw the cue ball back. This will all be based on how it feels to me. So I cleaned the cue ball, which hadn't yet been done. So now I'm trying the clean balls, but I'm playing it back in the opposite direction just so I don't wear my table out too much, to see if it's actually any better. And yeah, that does feel quite nice. But in all honesty, with this specific test, I couldn't really tell any difference. I probably should have come up with something better, but I couldn't think of anything. It might have been a little bit better. I couldn't really tell from that, but I think I've got a better way of finding out which was to clean the rest of the balls and go back to the lineup routine that I tried before I cleaned any of them. And this time it was a little bit better possibly. Again, it was hard to tell, but it felt like I was getting a little tiny bit more of a reaction, about the same as we saw the balls rolling on extra earlier. And this is similar if you've ever tried a new set of balls in the way that they seem to roll on more than the older ones and react a bit better than ones that have been used a lot and have become worn out over time. Which seems to be the difference that this makes. So do I really think it's worth buying? To find out, we're gonna have a look at the pros and cons. So for the pros, it does appear that the balls roll on a little bit further and react a bit better. This is usually true when you buy a set of new balls, so it seems to return them to that condition. Also, it works for quite a long time. I've had it on for a couple of days now and it still appears to be working. The small bottle size also makes it easy to take to the club, where the balls might not always be in pristine condition and really easily improve your game. On the negative side, it does take quite a while. You're looking at about five to 10 minutes to clean all the balls. It also takes a little bit of time for the balls to dry out. You might have noticed I actually got a miscue when I was testing it earlier. And I think this was because there was still some residue on the ball. So this takes a little bit more time as well. 
And finally, although the difference between having them cleaned and not is significant, it's probably slightly less than you would get if you brushed and ironed the table. And most people can't be bothered to do that before they start their frame, so I don't know if they're going to be bothered to do this, but we'll find out. The other thing I should point out is it's probably going to be more effective if you're playing at clubs where the balls aren't kept in such good conditions. If you suffer from a lot of kicks where you play, this might be a good option to get a decent frame of snooker. Because the only thing left to test is if this stuff helps you play some of Mark Williams' best shots. And we're going to be doing that after we find Dmitri, who impressively is still managing to watch us from Chinivsky, Ukraine which is there. We're going to begin with this shot that Mark played against Barry Hawkins during the World Championships a few years ago, where he pots a nice long red and stuns the cue ball across the table. This should test the backspin on the cue ball a little bit and see how easy it is to play the shot. I missed the first one, though got it on the second, which is pretty good because this one wasn't too challenging. This next one is a lot better test of getting spin on the cue ball as you need a lot of backspin and left hand side and it's a lot harder shot. You've got to make the cue ball arc back off the bolt cushion at the right angle and if the spray does help the cue ball react at all you're going to see it spinning into the reds at a more aggressive angle. This is a really difficult shot to play and even playing it like this made the pot more challenging. I eventually got it although didn't quite get as much spin on the cue ball as Mark but did finish in a nice position where I could easily pot a red. I'm not sure what this next shot shows, but it was a really well executed straight plant. I'm looking to do the same thing here and knock one red onto the other and leave myself on the pink in the middle pocket. I was really happy to get this after just one attempt. In terms of what we're looking for, this one's a lot more like it, as Mark manages to screw back off the green down the table, round two cushions for the red. This will require a lot of backspin, and I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get enough spin on the cue ball. So in a lot of ways, it is the perfect test. Initially, I couldn't quite screw back far enough, but then I started to have another problem, where I couldn't quite get back at the right angle, and started coming back far too straight off the green, and inadvertently putting right hand side on the cue ball when I was trying to get as much backspin as I could on it. And this actually needed a small trace of left hand side to make it around the red. It took me a number of attempts where I was hitting it far too straight every single time, but eventually I managed to get back at about the right angle. It took me quite a few shots, but I couldn't quite make it. I'm not sure if this spray helped at all, but if it did it might have gotten me a little tiny bit closer to getting on the red, and I certainly couldn't have played this any better, meaning unfortunately I kind of failed with this one. Another shot where Mark screws the cue ball back down the table. It doesn't require anything like the power of previous shots, but this time it requires a lot of skill to play the red off the black, and I nearly got it on my first attempt, and I was really pleased to get it in just two, because this really is quite a difficult shot. So in general, I think this will ever so slightly improve your game experience for a relatively cheap price. More experienced players have a higher chance of noticing a difference, especially if they're having to deal with some less than favourable conditions. But that does of course depend if you've got the 5-10 to 10 minutes free it takes to clean the balls. Either way, I was surprised at how good this was. I was expecting it to actually make the balls look clean, but not slightly improve the gameplay. And it does that a little bit, so I'm pretty pleased I got it actually. That said, I'm not sure how much I'll use it, but it might come in handy once in a while. So I'll leave a non-affiliate link in the description if you want to have a look. And if you want to see more videos where I recreate snooker player shots, have a look at these two. And remember, don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.